This video shows you the Toronto Raptors 2023 offseason outline. A loss in the play-in tournament to DR Don't Caller DeMar DeRozan and previously a first-round exit to Philadelphia was preceded by firing head coach Nick Nurse, who had lost the locker room. Whether it's signing and trading Fred Van Vliet, potentially moving Siakam to either Golden State slash Portland, or hiring a professional head coach who knows what it takes to not just win but achieve the ultimate glory, business decisions need to be made for a man with the former crown as GM wizard, Masai Ujiri. Here's what needs to be done for Toronto to get the ship steering towards ring number two. Right quick, just 12.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Splash thumbs up from distance like Scotty B for the YouTube algorithm. And for a follow back, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Back to the content. So the Raptors have gone from front-running relevancy to middle-of-the-pack irrelevancy in the span of four years since winning franchise championship number one with Kawhi Anthony Leonard, a.k.a. The Claw, back in 2019. Boy, does the six ever miss the all-time great defender, but it's time to admit the trade Toronto pulled off in 2018 was a once-in-a-lifetime miracle swap from Masai and Bobby Webster. After Kawhi took his sweet time before skipping town directly after flying the country of Canada its first championship banner, as the Drake lyric goes, he turned the six upside down, it's a nine now. The Raptors were never going to win a title or even come close to a ring without the two-time champ and top NBA superstar. Much is made about Kawhi setting sail for LA and the impact it had on Toronto's slow but sure to succumb to irrelevancy. Here's what you don't hear as much about, though. We don't take into account how losing the culture setter for this franchise and the greatest Raptor of all time, Kyle Lowry, impacted the franchise's mantra. Now, fellow Raptor fans, if you hadn't fully absorbed it throughout the near-decade run of trailblazing, record-setting, and title-cementing that North Philly's finest pulled off, we're now getting to witness firsthand how impactful he truly was, given he's a part of a Miami Heat team about to tip off the NBA Finals. Fred Van Vliet was an exceptional piece to the puzzle helping secure franchise chip number one. This man saved us time and time again as a role player with his determination, clutch three-point bucket getting, and general lay-it-all-out-there aura. Thing is, when Fred was then tasked as being the starting point guard with the departure of Kyle, he struggled to lead the franchise both on and off the court. And succeeding while having that main facilitator role as an NBA team's starting PG is easier said than done. Carrying a young team is even tougher. It requires setting the tone with vibrancy in terms of choosing wise words, having a mix of maturity and easygoingness, while also being able to relate to your teammates and coaching staff. To be fair, Steady Freddy didn't have too much support from head coach Nick Nurse last year. A year after an ugly locker room dispute with Pascal Siakam, Nurse would admit down the stretch of the season while this team was in a playoff race in 2023 that he was halfway out the door. Months before that, I made a video calling out both he and Scotty Barnes. The Michael Carter-Williams comparison I gave to soon-to-be third-year pro and former ROI Scotty Barnes was ultimately short-sighted, but had the intentions of being motivational. As for Nurse, I stand by my words from that December video in terms of saying that he had an old-school approach that couldn't relate to his players. That proved itself to be true. For Scotty, he would have an impressive second half of the season, showing himself to be an electric combo forward with his ability to space the floor and defend at a high level. Shout out to Scotty B, who evidently got off scot free. <laughs> Going back to Freddie V, though, and we can all agree on one thing. Ben Taylor was fucking terrible tonight. In all seriousness, despite the fact that it was pushing two months ago at this point, I'm still in shock about how the Raptors choked in the play in game. I was pleading my ass off to referee Mr. Gucci Mane that we weren't getting a fair shake in a home game, which maybe contributed to Pascal Siakam drawing three free throws on a whistle that should have been two penalty attempts at the charity stripe. Instead, he got three. Siakam would definitively choke those foul shots, however, which was completely unacceptable from your top guy. He did have an incredible season, but the great people of Toronto who have a profound mix of toughness, genuine spirit, loyalty, and appreciation, they deserved better than that play-in disaster. They deserved better than their head coach losing the locker room essentially right off the bat last season. And they deserved better than watching their team leave points at the line one time after the next when it mattered the very, very most.
Over the past couple seasons up north, we haven't seen the culture which was set in stone by Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan for year after year in the 2010s decade, and that Kawhi set for his lone year in T.O. get carried over, really in any form, to this next era. I mean, sure, they had their moments last season in 2021-22, but let's be real with ourselves, prisoner of the moment slash recency bias slash overhyped up predictions aside, and this has not felt like anything close to a championship level team in quite some time. With such an elite president at the helm in Masai Ujiri, whose Carmelo Anthony trade when he was the Nuggets GM landed him Jamal Murray and is having an impact on the championship Nuggets as we speak, our fan base training staff, coaches, and players must have all hands on deck in terms of pushing towards title number two to take advantage of you jury being here. However, becoming a championship team in all likelihood won't happen overnight like it did with the Kawhi trade. A different method needs to be utilized in order to achieve this second ring. This method needs to be centered around taking it one year at a time to build back what this franchise once had, that being a perennial contender. By 2026, the Raptors will be able to compete for a championship if their front office executes something along the lines of these next steps. A. Signing and trading Fred Van Vliet to Philadelphia in exchange for a package involving Tyrese Maxey. Now stick around to hear me out on that one. B. Trading Pascal Siakam to the Portland Trailblazers in exchange for a package involving Amphrony Simons, C. 100% commit to making Scotty Wayne Barnes Jr. the face of this franchise. D. Hire Sacramento Kings associate head coach Jordy Fernandez, whose vibrancy and competitive edge will get this young Toronto locker room to buy in, and whose Mike Brown influenced playbook can develop over time. In terms of A. Fred Van Vliet's emerged as a potential replacement for James Harden in Philadelphia as the beard is expected to walk in free agency. Van Vliet also told Shams that Nurse would be a breath of fresh air in his new role as head coach of the Sixers. As written by phillysportsnetwork.com, quote, While Van Vliet stopped short of asking Nurse to come rescue him, it sounds like the two are plotting something behind the scenes. The 29-year-old has a $22.82 million player option for the 23-24 season that he intends to exercise and become an unrestricted free agent. That was already common knowledge. Now with his favorite coach switching zip codes, it seems as if Van Vliet is ready to change uniforms as well, end quote. It's admittedly a stretch to assume Van Vliet could land the Raptors' Tyrese Maxey in a sign-and-trade, but that's why the Raptors would also throw in a protected future first-round pick and precious Achua to make this deal work. Achua could provide solid backup minutes for Embiid, and late first-round picks in today's NBA have become increasingly valuable. The reason the Sixers would also be willing to give up Maxey is that Tyrese is a dominant ball handler who has some maturing to do both on and off the court. He could benefit from a change of scenery, but more focally, it's the fact that Maxi needs the ball in his hands to thrive, which didn't mesh to its full potential with Harden, and it wouldn't with Van Vliet, who has the same playstyle as Harden, essentially. In terms of B, the Blazers are looking to win now at all costs with Damian Lillard's clock ticking and Pascal Siakam would give them an elite second option who's already won a title in that very role. Conversely, the Raptors are looking to continue to retool over the next few years in order to slowly but surely get back into the title picture. The Raptors don't fit Pascal's timeline, and getting a young talent back in Simons, who's proven he can play off the ball next to Damian Lillard, would make him a great fit next to Maxi. In terms of C, Scotty Barnes has already shown himself to be one of the most versatile players in the NBA. All he needs is some young teammates he can both vibe off and develop next to. We saw how he and Maxi got along at All-Star Saturday during their rookie years. We're gonna give each other a hug. No. Give me a hug. No, give me a hug. You're not hugging. Yes, you are. Please don't hug. I'm hugging you. No, don't hug. Go to peace shot. Don't hug. You sweaty, bro. And whether you're a Raptor fan or not, you can't help but admit that seeing these two grow together as teammates would be awesome to watch. In terms of D, you may be wondering, D Flo, we know you're a JJ Redick hater, and we should just hire JJ. And while JJ's story somewhat relates to Steve Kerr's, given he was a role-playing sniper with over a decade of NBA experience, 
There's one element where Redick doesn't relate to Steve. JJ never won an NBA championship as a player. Kerr won five rings as a player with two different teams. So in my humble opinion, taking a chance on an evidently comfortable leader in Jordy Fernandez would be the perfect route to take for such a young group. But do you agree with me about the Raptors 2023 offseason outline? I want to know your take down below. This was D-Flow and I'll see you next video.